Next to you, starstruck. An internet fake dating apartment neighbors. Famous AU fan fiction. Chapter 16. Walking back to the car, Marinette and Adrian are silent. They're both breathing hard from the fight and calming down individually. When she settles in the passenger side, Adrian grabs her hand and grazes his thumb over her fingers. It still sends tingles through her entire being, and Marinette blushes madly. Still, she doesn't say anything. They both know that they need to calm down before they say anything to each other. Sorry, he says after 10 minutes or so. Marinette's not quite sure why they're, where they're driving to, and she doubts that he really knows either. I'm sorry you had to see all of that, he sighs. And I'm sorry that my father said that. His face scrunches up in annoyance about you. He's wrong and doesn't even know you at all, he grumbles. Marinette sighs and just squeezes their hands tight. Some of the tension eases out of his expression and she smiles at him, making him feel a little bit better. It's okay, she says soothingly. Your father seemed judgy. Anyways, she says, thinking about her choice of word. I don't care much for his opinion, though, so no harm is done. I didn't really think he'd like me, she tells him. Adrian flickers his eyes at her and laughs bitterly. He's always been like that, Adrian says. His tone is dark and cynical. Two things that Adrian is normally not. Again, he looks at her and sighs. You are great, though. And... I don't think I'll ever be able to say that thank you enough times, he tells her honestly. Marinette laughs a bit and raises a playful eyebrow at him. Thank you for what? She teases. For being you, Adrian says shortly. He smiles at her and it's, it's so genuine that it makes her choke on nothing. And for yelling at my father. Thank you for that, especially, he continues. Marinette winces. Oh god, I did yell at him, Marinette gapes. She buries her face in her hands, yelling at her boyfriend's father. Yeah, that that's something she never thought she'd do. I feel like I should be guilty, but I honestly don't feel that way at all, she admits. Adrian sucks in a shaky breath. Yeah, I I understand that feeling, he says in a faraway voice. Adrian stops in front of a few older buildings in the very heart of Paris. Some of them are crumbling, while others are still bustling and looking wonderful and looking in good shape. Marinette looks over to him quizzingly, and he just stares out the window. He's lost in thought. She's not sure if she should shake him out of his reverie or not. Hey, Marinette settles for speaking softly and tapping his shoulder. Adrian jolts towards her. Do you, you want to talk about anything? About everything? She asks in a kind of tone. Adrian doesn't say anything, but the corners of his mouth turn up. With a shaky breath, he nods. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know a little bit about my childhood, Adrian says with a wire smile. Indeed, sh she does. It's a, from a combination of swarming magazines in her youth and his small anecdotes. Looking back, it was sort of awful, Adrian jokes. Well, you never really realize something is wrong until something else changes, right? Marinette points out. Adrian huffs a laugh. I guess so, he says. But just, my father was so controlling. I think he had a plan for me, one that I obviously didn't follow. 
Adrian sighs. Really? Marinette jabs his side, trying to lighten the mood a little. I don't think he masterminded your scheme. Much to her delight, Adrian laughs. Probably. He laughs. He plays along with her little joke. There's probably this little book in the basement with all of the steps perfectly laid out. Step one, lock him in the house for nearly a decade, allowing him to only go outside for photo shoots and events. Step two, give him no friends whatsoever, Adrian jokes. Step three, get him a random neighbor girl and have him be caught in a photo with her so they have to fake date for months, Marinette adds on cheaply. Adrian throws his head back in laughter. See, if that was the case, I wouldn't be so mad about the book of instructions. He says. Marinette doesn't know how to respond to that and just opts to shyly smile back at him. Really, though, I think after Mom died, he, he got obsessed with playing God. Of putting people in perfect order and perfect images that can't ever be hurt because it's all so well planned out. Certainly, I was supposed to be his magnum opus. Perfect son, perfect model, perfect family with Kagami. All that planning sure did him a fair amount of good. He says with an aspirated tone. He sighs and leans onto the steering wheel, careful as to not honk at the building in front of him for no reason at all, perhaps scaring a civilian in the process. I really can't believe he wants me engaged to Kagami. I haven't even met her before, he cries out. There's there's really not much Mary can do, and she, she knows this. She only rubs his arm consolingly to show him that she's there. You know, the dinner table has always been like that, since I was really young. I'd sit at one end because my father told me to do so, and he'd sit on the other. I'd barely be able to see him, Adrian mutters. You're not gas. That's awful, she cries out. That's not family at all. Family is, it's about being together. At dinner, at the movies, at parties, she says, growing more and more hatred for his father. God, <laughs> she really wanted to tear him to shreds. As morbid as that sounded. How dare Gabriel treat Adrian like this, his, practically his entire life. And to think that he used to be her childhood idol. To think that he used to be her inspiration for her design. Marinette scoffed at her past self. She had no idea how he had been treating his son at the same time she had been dreaming of working for him. Now she never wanted to see him again, unless it was to punch him in the face. Marinette gritted her teeth. Control yourself, Marinette, she had to repeat in her head. She was getting angry again, and that is not what Adrian needed right now. Yeah, well, my family didn't work that way. It was all homeschooling lessons, piano, fencing, and then photo shoots. Not anymore, Marinette says firmly. You have a new family now, me, she states, and a smile grows on Adrian's face. Really? He asks as if that was even a question. Of course, she grins back at him. Me? You, Tiki, Flag, Alia, we're our, a whole new family and we'll keep things together. Like planning our fake meet cute story, she giggles. Adrian looks ten times happier and ten times brighter as a minute before. You're right, he says happily. We do do things together. Like it just like a real family does. Yep, Marinette makes herself a secret and silent vow to make sure that Adrian would never feel alone again. He had had a lifetime's worth of that feeling. He didn't need any more. 
ring. Adrian's phone shines, and he picks it up for only a second before throwing it right back down to the ground, groaning into his hands. Marinette has a bit of a guess as to who called. Your father? she asks wirily. Basically, he says miserably, slumping in his seat. His assistant called me. Remember the woman who went to talk to him at the top of the stairs? That's Natalie. She's been his assistant for practically my entire life. She's like his right-hand man. Think of it like that. And normally, when things happen, he sends her to fetch me or tell me. Now that I think about it, Natalie was more present in my, in my childhood than he ever was. Adrian laughs bitterly. I mean, she took care of me when I was sick. And she showed up to my conferences and meets. She woke me up when I was going to be late for a lesson or something. That's what a parent does, right? He says. Marinette nods silently to show him that she was listening. You had her, and of course your mother, she says, trying to make him feel better. He looks skeptical. I guess. Adrian scratches his neck. My mother gave me the best memories I could ever ask for. Aside from you, maybe. He flickers his eyes towards her, and Marinette has to look away sheepishly. I, I remember her bedtime stories and nighttime songs, but I don't have a lot of memories with her since she passed away early. But... Natalie wasn't that nurturing either, honestly. She was just there, I think, he says. Just doing a job, so I don't really have a parent. One doesn't care about me, one wants to control me, and one isn't around anymore. Marinette freezes. Oh no, she didn't want him to feel like that. As much as it's probably a good thing that Adrian is processing all of the trauma from his childhood, that's also making him reflect on how little of a normal life he had. Marinette musters up the courage and prepares to do something that she did not want to do anytime soon due to the sheer embarrassment that would occur when it hypothetically happened. You have to? Adrian is very shocked and she doesn't blame him in the slightest. My parents, she explains, face heating up. Adrian's face glows. Really? He asks excitedly. Do you, do you think they'd like me? He's bouncing like a kid in a bounce house. Marinette nods. Certainly, they would. Oh my god, Adrian shouts a little bit too loudly. When can I meet them? He asks her impatiently. Marinette takes in a breath. Maybe today, if you want. She offers, and Adrian looks like he's about to explode. Cheerfully, it's funny. It's a funny scene. The big is close by, and they always tell me that they love it when I visit, and that we can come anytime, she tells him. So, maybe, if you're feeling up to it, we can go see them now. But, you know, before the rush of dinner comes, she offers. Yes, yes, yes. That would be so great, Adrian says. Without a second thought, he shifts the car in reverse and backs out, asking Marinette where the bakery is and how long it will take to get there. Not long, I think, Marinette laughs at his kid-like ex excitement. This is the Adrian that she's used to. I'm so excited. I passed by your family bakery so much growing up. Honestly, I always wanted to go in. He sighs in a dreamy way. And now I finally do. Marinette can't help but giggle at his excitement. It's so sweet and genuine. Well, today is your lucky day, she teases him. Adrian enthusiastically nods his head yes. So, so I guess cheer for your new life with a new family, she says. Adrian looks at her for a second. Yeah, he says softly, with a new family. 
Something warm stirs in their neck, which is ironic, because Adrian is about to meet her parents for the very first time.